So since Christmas last year, I've been getting into quads. And um, as some of you have been watching my videos for a while now, I started out with this little Heligai Viper, which uh, really started me um, into quads. It's a fantastic little model, and it was really easy to fly. And coming from um, helicopters, it was uh, a revelation, really, because I thought quads were tricky. Um, so to give you an idea of the size, we'll leave that there. Then the next one I went up to was the... Armour tank quad, which is this size, which is about 258 millimeter size, and um, that's been giving me a lot of fun. Um, and now, hopefully, you can see that the latest <laughs> in the fleet, which I've just finished building, is the new um, H copter frame from Hobby King 470 millimeters. I just wanted to do a very quick video this morning, um, sun shining, so I'll be actually out today, but one of the things that I really struggled with here was um, getting the motors to run properly because this frame is not using the KK 2.0 board, it's actually using the Arduino Pilot 2.5 board. Um, and uh, not being used to it, I probably played for about two and a half, three hours yesterday trying to figure out what was going on and eventually sorted it. So what I wanted to do was just give all of those people who were looking at moving up from a KK 2.0 to something like the Ardu Pilot 2.5 a clue on some of the tips, tricks and gotchas when you're connecting your motors. A uh, couple of quick points just to uh, go through on this model. Um, it's an FPV platform, this one, so I am going to be replacing these motors and props with uh, bigger versions of each. Um, the thrust on this is enough that will get in the air, but there's nowhere near enough headway for it to cope with winds at altitude, so we're going to have to do that so there's more on the way. Um, uh, a GoPro Hero 3 Silver Edition at the front, connected to a Easy OSD on-screen display and a um, immersion RC transmitter to go to the Factshark goggles. Spectrum AR7010 receiver with a satellite on the other side and at the back here the Arduino Pilot 2.5 board um, facing forward so the controls go into the front and the motors connect to the back. And at the very back the GPS sensor which is for the Arduino Pilot so that it knows where it is in 3D space. So what I'll do is I'm going to turn this thing around so we're looking at it from behind and I'm going to show you a little trick that I saw um, on, a, um, on a blog somewhere yesterday when I was desperately trying to figure out what was going on. So the application that we're going to use to do this is the Mission Planner software. So this is Mission Planner version 1.0. I'll click the icon. Um, apologies for the contrast on the display. I'm just filming directly the uh, screen of my little netbook and uh, rather than actually capture it on the on the actual machine itself. So it's a little bit washed out, but bear with it. Um, you'll get the idea. So once it's started, which takes a second. Oh, no, we don't want to do the update. Not for this. There we are. So we're not connected. So. Um, I'm going to connect to the model in a moment, but just give you a very quick overview. There are lots of other videos that show you how to use this, um, this and I'm sure in the coming couple of weeks I'll be uh, referring to it again as I start to play with it. Um, the reason I have it on a netbook is so it's very portable, um, so that I can actually um, use, the, uh, use the thing at the field to configure the model. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm actually going to... Um, power up the model and then using a USB cable I'm actually going to plug it into the thing itself. So let's just set that up and then we'll, uh, we'll show you the little trick with the motors. So first thing we'll do, we'll plug the USB cable into here. Next thing we'll do, I'll power on the model. And finally, the last thing I'll do, I'll plug the other end of the USB cable into the Ardu Pilot 2.5. Like so. So here we are back. So now we have the machine turned on. I'm going to click the connect button. 
So it'll connect up to the model. Here comes all the parameters. So I'm actually talking now directly to the Arduino Pilot 2.5. And as soon as all this data comes across, we'll have a live connection. And we can either configure it through the graphical interface, which is really easy to use. There we are, we've got the GPS lock. And I'll prove it's um, connected if I actually just tilt the model. You'll see the artificial horizon changing. Um, so what I'm going to do though, I'm actually going to go into the terminal. Now the terminal is looks like a MS-DOS interface, but actually what you can do in here is you can type a command line that will actually run the motors in sequence and you'll see how they should run. It uses um, very low power settings and it just pulses the models one after the other. So what we'll do is we'll actually set up to a slightly different angle so you can see the model and the terminal. I'll, we'll go through what that actually looks like. So here we are, we're looking at the model from behind. So the front of the model is away from us here with the GoPro 3 at the front and the GPS chip at the back. So the, the motor layout is as we can see in this diagram. So just take note of the numbers because this is how you're, you've got to connect them up. Now, what you can do in the command line is you can actually type in here, set up motors, hit enter, oops, sorry, set up then motors, I beg your pardon, there we go, and what will happen, it will spin the motors in sequence, so front right will go first, back right, back left, front left. So you'll see that it's actually going around in a clockwise motion. So it spins this one first, followed by this one, followed by this one, followed by that one. And what it's doing is if you have the motors connected correctly, you will see it'll start in the top right hand corner and go around the model in a clockwise direction. If it doesn't, then you have them connected wrongly. I had a problem the other day where I hadn't actually connected one of the motors in um, the right way. I actually had two of them crossed over and that was the thing I'd done. I actually labelled up the connectors back here in slightly the wrong way so it wasn't very happy. So just be aware of that. Um, what I'll do now is I'm going to put up a couple of diagrams just to show you how you connect and the sequence for motors one two, three, and four. And if you follow that guidance and you make sure that it's connected properly, you should find that you can take off without the model tipping over and destroying all of your hard work. Thanks for watching. Post any comments or questions.